Good morning, Evan Band family and anyone listening. This is Pastor Larry with a moment in the word on this, the 21st uh, day of September. It's Tuesday and um, trust that you had a, a good morning, that your week started off uh, right. Um, we're studying uh, still in the book of Romans. We're still on the 12th chapter. We haven't meant to do every single verse, uh, a, a, a total devotion, just on uh, each verse individually. Uh, but um, uh, we try to keep our uh, devotions down to 10 to 12 minutes. And sometimes we go a little bit over once in a while, maybe a little less. Uh, but um, uh, how much the verse has for us to share with you depends upon how far we can go. Now, remember again, we are studying the book of Romans uh, broken down into seven uh, parts. Uh, the introduction is uh, Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through uh, 17. Um, the conclusion is chapter 15, verses 14 through chapter 16. And between the introduction and the conclusion, we have five parts. Um, uh, part one, uh, every one of the parts deals with the righteousness of God, and every one of them has a particular word that starts with a P to help you understand. You remember, hopefully, that uh, part one, we have the righteousness of God, the, a predicament of the sinner, uh, beginning in chapter 1, verse 18, through um, chapter uh, 3, uh, verse 20. Uh, part two, we have uh, chapter 3, verse 21, down through chapter 4, the righteousness of God, a provision by the Savior. Our predicament is that we're all lost and we're on our way to hell. We've all sinned. We've earned the wage of death. Nothing we can do about it in our own right, with our own abilities. Uh, but praise God, in part two, Paul points out there in chapter four, by faith, uh, God has provided a provision through Jesus Christ, uh, through his shed blood, through faith in that shed blood. In chapters five, six, seven, and eight, Four chapters deals with the righteousness of God, the possession of the saints, and he talks about all that we have um, as Christians uh, uh, in Christ. Uh, and then 9 and 10 and 11, you remember we talked about the righteousness of God, a prohibition of the self-righteous, dealing with the self-righteousness of the Jew who has a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, going about to establish their own righteousness. They've rejected the righteousness which is in Christ. Uh, uh, and uh, they're in Romans chapter 10. Uh, Two days ago, we began with Romans chapter 12, which is the fifth part, and it's the righteousness of God, the practice of the saints. So we have the predicament, the provision, the possession, the prohibition, and now then the practice of the saints. And we talked about in, chapter, in verses 1 of chapter 12 that we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice, one that is holy and one that's acceptable to God. And um, in giving ourselves totally to God is just a reasonable service. In verse 2, we talked about the fact that the only way that we can really do this is by uh, being transformed, allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and work that born-again experience in us, transforming our hearts, regenerating our hearts, renewing our minds, at, so that we might know what is the good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Now then, Beginning in verse 3, and we'll try to get through at least maybe a couple of verses anyway. Uh, but here in, in chapter, in verse 3, he says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every uh, man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he, uh, than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Paul is going to point out a couple of three things here. Uh, number one, he's going to point out that uh, um, the authority that he has for writing this is uh, uh, the grace of God. Paul didn't deserve uh, to be an apostle, but God called him to be one anyway by his grace. And what he is writing here, uh, he is writing uh, through the authority of, of the apostleship which God by his grace has given to him. Paul will often refer 
to uh, his apostleship as a grace. Um, uh, we see that in Philippians chapter 1. I believe it's verse 7, but don't hold me to that. Um, but uh, a second thing here, he says, For I say through the grace of God given to me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself uh, more highly than he ought to think. What Paul is talking about here is humility. We're to walk with humility. Uh, uh, there's no place for pride in the life of the Christian. Uh, all of us are sinners, deserving of hell. None of us have uh, nothing. Uh, he says, in, and he asked the question in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, he says, what do you have? But what you have received. In other words, uh, uh, everything that I have, if I have great faith, if I have great teaching ability, if I have uh, uh, preaching skills uh, uh, or teaching skills or resources or whatever, everything that I have, I have received from God. And I have nothing on my own, and therefore I have nothing that I can boast about or be proud about. And, and so he says here uh, that, uh, that every man... Um, Think of himself, not think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. In other words, we're to have a honest estimate of ourselves. We're not to think of ourselves uh, so much as we maybe would like to think of ourselves, but think of ourselves um, in light of uh, uh, the abilities, the gifts, and so forth that God has given us, or the light thereof that God has given us, and uh one of the gifts, uh, when we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you'll talk about the gifts that God gives to every one of us. And one of those gifts is the gifts of helps. And it may be that uh, uh, the only gift that God has given you is just the gift to uh, hold up the hands of someone else in prayer. It's, uh, maybe you can't preach or teach or, uh, or uh, maybe on the other hand, uh, you have a astute ability to make money and um, uh, therefore uh, uh, again that ability comes from God and he has given it to you so that you might use it in order to support those uh, who are uh, more capable as far as uh, sharing the word of God or writing um, the uh, great writings of, of God, the great books uh, that um, uh, instructs us uh, concerning God. So, uh, and third thing is that we're, we're to be humble. We're to have a humble spirit. The word humble means uh, uh, sober, means uh, sound. It means sane. We're to have a objective uh, view of ourselves, uh, uh, seeing ourselves as uh, uh, perhaps as others do. Notice he says in verse 4, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. In other words, my friend, if we took every single child of God, every truly born-again Christian, uh, whether it be in China or Russia or uh, Europe or Australia or South America or uh, here in the United States or Canada, in the Philippines, uh, the islands of the sea, uh, wherever they be at, Every single child of God who is truly born again makes up a part of the body of Christ. And um, therefore, uh, uh, each one of us collectively make up the body of Christ. Each one of us individually makes up a part of the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians, Paul is going to compare the um, uh, spiritual body the church with a physical body and, and point out that just like our body has physical parts and each one is dependent upon the other, each one uh, supports the other. In our Christian walk, each of us um, have an individual gift. It's given to us by the Holy Spirit. It, it may be our ability, to, as we said a while ago, to make money, to, uh, to uh, support those who are on the uh, front line as far as the speaking goes, as far as uh, the teaching goes, as far as um, uh, building uh, Bible colleges and, and ministering therein, uh, or as a missionary on a foreign field. Uh, each one of us is gifted with uh, that special gift that God has given to us. 
and uh, uh, every one of us has to operate within the scope of that which God has given to us. Uh, if a person could not read, uh, I had um, two brothers who couldn't read, they would hardly qualify for being the president of a Bible college. But they were both saints of God and uh, uh, certainly was able to be a help. Uh, they had the gift of helps uh, and um, uh, God used each one of them. And uh, the same uh, is true. Whatever that gift is that we have, we operate within that gift. Some are gifted to pastor a church of, of uh, a thousand or, or more, several thousand. Uh, the average pastor, in all honesty, does not have that ability. I do not have that ability. I uh, wish I did, but I don't. Uh, does that mean that I give up and quit? No, it means I pastor the church that God gives us whatever size that is. Uh, and no matter what size it is, we are to be trying to reach souls not for the purpose of getting a big church, but because God has called us to be soul winners. And so we use that talent, that skill, those resources, uh, that opportunities that God affords us through his grace to be the servant of God that God would have us to be. We're running out of time. Tomorrow we'll look at some of those, a couple of those anyway, uh, gifts that, that Paul is going to mention here in, in verses uh, 5 and 6 there. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, at this point, let me just simply say, hey, if you're born again, you're a part of the body of Christ. You are a child of God, and uh, you have an important role to play, whatever your position is, whatever your gift is, whatever your opportunities are, whatever your potential. Uh, my friend, God wants to use you to the fullest of your ability. And when you allow God to use you to the fullest of your ability, then uh, at the end of the road, you're going to reap a reward. Uh, and uh, at the end of the road, my friend, the helper is just as important as the college builder or the professor um, or, uh, uh, you know, anyone else within the body. Um, so uh, let me just say to you, hey, this is uh, uh, Pastor Larry on Tuesday. Go forth and have a blessed and wonderful day. Be a blessing to someone today. Look for an opportunity to speak to someone of God's love. It'll bless them. It'll bless you. It'll bless God. And God, in turn, will bless you as well. Have a wonderful Tuesday.